Hello everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to a very exciting episode of CSK News. I hope you guys all enjoy. Let's hop into our first story though. In breaking news just this morning, we have Skadoodle announced on Twitter this post on screen. He will be staying with Cloud9 seemingly for the time being as of course their fit member and their opper. That means yes, no Nifty guys, no Yugi, no JDM from Liquid. It will be yes, Cloud9's fit member will be Skadoodle returning from the bench and apparently after doing very well in ECS and ESL matches, they're going to sign him for a longer period of time or at least stick with him for the time being. So that was in huge news this morning. Also followed by a couple days ago, guys, we do have Taz confirming in an interview, which I'll link down below for all of you. He actually did confirm, yes, it will be Kingwin to be his final team in CSGO. Now, this could mean two things in the future, of course. Will he be adding other Virtus Pro members to this squad and roster on screen for all of you? Kingwin being a top 40 team in the world. But this also means, you know, bouncing off that as well, them being a top 40 team in the world, will they ever make the major again? Will we ever see Taz stickers or new Taz stickers for the major? It's going to be a far fetch for a team like this. Of course, Kingwin, one of your better Polish teams out there and still doing quite decently especially after adding Taz to the roster as well as Reitz. They're doing quite well, but still, for a top 40 team to make it all the way to the major qualifier, it's going to be a bit of a stretch, and this could be the last year we do see Taz. What's the future hold for this guy? No one knows right now, but he has confirmed for us it will be Kingwin to be his last CSGO roster. This kind of bouncing off the old news we saw with Guardian. Guardian saying FaZe will be his last roster. So yes, Taz will stay with Kingwin go. The real question is, will Kingwin do anything sufficient to actually make his legacy kind of fulfilled by the end of it? And also another huge news out there, potential CIS shuffle incoming, which seems to be a lower CIS shuffle, not, not really a big one involving Na'Vi like people may have speculated. It does seem though that Vega Squadron's members who have been sent to the bench, both Mir and Kashander, will be picked up by some other CIS team very shortly here. As they did announce this past weekend, guys, they will be benched for the time being due to some sort of team conflict. Now, I also want to show you guys the post as well. Because of some confusing wording on their part, I'm pretty sure these guys are up for grabs by other CIS teams, but their wording is a bit confusing as it does say, from now on, Mir and Kishander are officially reserved and are open from transfer. Instead of saying open for transfer, they say they're open from transfer. It could be interpreted though that these guys are actually now on the reserve team. They're on the reserve roster and are open for transfer, meaning they are available to be picked up by other teams out there. I'll link the article down below. Apparently a very good CIS source does say these two members, both Mir and Kishander, could be joining. Yes, it's actually Zeus's team. Zeus is actually a president of Pro 100 and apparently they could be joining his organization and that team over there. I would say a big step down from this Vegas squadron roster who's been at very uh, the last however many majors out there and one of the longest standing CSGO squadrons or CSGO squadron. One of the longest standing CSGO squads has now been broken apart, guys. Mir and Kishander could be taking a big step down to Pro 100, a very, I guess you could say, definitely a lower tier roster, and they will not be going to the major. I can almost guarantee that, guys. But a big CIS shuffle, most likely not happening. And also, in some very cool news, if you guys did not see my video about this, I actually did 100 Overwatch cases. I released it yesterday at the same time. We also had three clicks Phil, War Owl, other YouTubers out there released a lot of stuff about VACnet. Of course, VACnet being Valve's anti cheat method. If you guys don't know about that, I'll post some articles down below about their ever-expanding effort to try and stop cheaters inside CSGO. I'll also link the three clicks Phil and War Owls videos down below. Some great videos, great information in those videos, and I want to bounce off this as well as we did have actually uh, John McDonald from Valve actually spoke this past weekend at GDC, the game development conference, about Valve's anti-cheat and their army of CPUs they've actually invested in to fight CSGO cheaters. Now again, I talked about this a long time ago. I'll link the article down below, guys, where Valve actually invested into 1,700 CPUs and bought an additional 1,700 as well. They're going to try and expand into their army to fight cheaters out there and of course CSGO notoriously known as one of those games with the most cheaters right now on the scene because it's most simple to cheat inside CSGO. I want to make a comment about this because I made my video doing 100 Overwatch cases and in that I found some stats that actually line up very well with what John said in his article. So this uh, this actual conference will be linked down below but his article was done a long time ago where he talked about VACnet and of course the progress it hopes to make in the future. Now first off I do want to say and again John McDonald stresses this Overwatch is a necessity out there although it's not near as efficient as VACnet. VACnet, when they find a conviction or actually find a suspect, 80 to 95 percent of the time, it's going to be actually a convicted ban or convicted VAC ban, and so that's very consistent. 80 to 95 percent of the time that they find someone, it's going to be a cheater. Now, Overwatch is a bit different, as John actually states in the article down below, that 15 to 30 percent of the time, it's when a conviction actually occurs. So if you actually go ahead and actually, if you go through an Overwatch case and you give someone aim assist or wall assist or whatever it might be, convicting them, it's only 15 to 30 percent of the time where they're actually going to be convicted 
convicted of a ban. Now this lines up perfectly. If you guys watched my video, I actually sent 64 cases with at least some sort of evidence to, the, of course, the Overwatch process. Of those 64 cases, how many confirmations did I get of actual bans? Only 12. What does that equate to? Just over 18% of the time where I actually convicted someone I thought was cheating is when they actually got banned. So this lines up perfectly with what John McDonald said. We still need the Overwatch cases out there, guys. We still need the community actively trying to, of course, go after these cheaters. It cannot be VACnet alone, although this goes to show you the efficiency of VACnet and how, how much of a necessity it might be for the future. And so that was very interesting. I thought it was very cool to see that VACnet is so efficient, but still, I do need to stress as well, if you guys can do Overwatch, you must try your best to do so to try and combat all the countless cheaters out there right now in CSGO. And very last of today's episode of CSGO News, thank you guys for watching. A huge shout out to all of you guys who've actually uh, started using my new sponsor. It's actually Arcane Bet. For all of you guys who love esports betting, guys, a very trusted website out there. I'll link my referral link down below for all of you. And thank you guys who support my channel by signing up today. So also on top of that, for our last story though, I do want to talk about, of course, our Steam privacy settings update. I'll link a very lengthy, or not even lengthy video, a very good video by Sadalva down below to give you guys full details on the Steam privacy settings. Mainly right now, though, the only thing that's really bothering us in CSGO is you can actually now hide your CSGO hours or your in-game time. So if you guys go to my profile, you see almost 2,000 hours and how bad I am at CSGO. I can, of course, go to my privacy settings and now all of a sudden, guys, here's what you see. You see absolutely nothing. I'm not really sure why the recent activity is still there at all because it blocks all your games anyway. So uh, anyway, though, so you guys can now, of course, if you are a cheater or kind of bouncing off back net, you can actually hide your in-game hours. And so, of course, whenever you're in a matchmaking game and you're accusing someone of being a smurf because all of a sudden they're MG2 with 45 hours well they can actually hide that now so I'm not really sure if it's a good update I think there's mostly positive reviews out there so far as always though hope you guys all enjoyed this video of CSK news if you guys did please leave a like more importantly leave a comment down below hope you guys all enjoy I will see you guys all tomorrow or sometime soon my name is Jake Morale like you and uh, goodbye guys <laughs>